Hey people, in this video I want to give you practical tips on how to improve your balance on the drums. On the one hand, there are tips on what you can do if you have problems with your balance, for example when playing the double bass drum. On the other hand, there are also tips and specific exercises on how to improve your balance in general so that you don't develop problems in the first place and can learn and play in a more relaxed and effective way. Learning your instrument more effectively is basically the title of this whole channel, so if you're new, be sure to subscribe as I'll keep bringing you new tips on how to get more out of your practice time while staying happier and healthier. If this video helps you on this path, please give it a like and write me something in the comments because this actually boosts the visibility of this channel and it's an easy way for you to give back. Thanks very much and we'll get started right away. First, we have to ask ourselves what balance actually is. Sounds trivial, but it's not that easy to define. You can write me your definitions in the comments, that would be an interesting survey. Sure, a synonym for balance is equilibrium or steadiness, but as long as we're not sitting reclined or lying down, we have to constantly compensate. When standing alone, small and large muscles in our legs, stomach and back are constantly active and making micro adjustments so that we don't fall over. If we move, then of course even more so, because the angular relationships of our limbs and thus the influence of gravity are constantly changing. In other words, there really is no balance, only balancing. So balance shouldn't be a noun, it's a verb. As long as we're moving, there's no equilibrium, just constant adjusting. And on the drums, we move a lot. The hands move and thus constantly change the influence of gravity on the upper body at the, as a lever, while our feet do not offer a secure anchor because they also move. And then we almost always sit without a backrest. It is important to understand this first. We are talking about dynamic balance, meaning the ability to equalize movements and keep our posture while the influence of gravity changes. That means there is no such thing as the perfect sitting position on the drum set because we never sit still. And what's more, it is very difficult to train balance as a basic skill, that is, the organ of equilibrium itself. What we can train, however, is the interaction of the muscles to gain the ability to adjust quickly and efficiently. And this brings me to my first tip. Train this skill. How can we do this? Before we look at how you do it on the drums, two suggestions what you can do as preparatory training, so to speak. On the one hand, we should train the muscles of our trunk, that is everything that helps us keep an upright posture, especially the back muscles, but on the drums, the abdominal muscles are also quite important as they help us to lift our legs while sitting. Regular strength training for your abs and back is therefore a good investment in your long-term health and a good preparation for playing the drums. You don't even have to register at the gym, there are plenty of websites with tips and workouts on YouTube. If you don't work out at all, then you definitely should start here first. If this doesn't improve your balance significantly within six weeks, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. And the other thing is regularly do things that improve your kinesthetic awareness the perception of your body and its movements. In a nutshell, everything that forces you to learn new movement patterns, everything that ensures that you push your balance to the limit and actually fall down every now and then, trains the interaction of your muscles and thus your ability to keep your balance better. So go to the trampoline park, go bouldering, inline skating or just play frisbee. Leave your comfort zone because doing this is also a very important basic attitude towards learning in general. Anyone who keeps finding themselves in new situations will also dare to keep learning new things on the instrument, even if it's exhausting or you feel like a beginner again. So make this a habit as well and your body awareness will constantly improve and with it also your balance. By the way, strength training with dumbbells or kettlebells is also incredibly good balance training because with many exercises you have to stay in the same position the whole time, despite large and above all changing leverage and that is taken care of by your postural muscles. So in the gym or in your home workout, you are also training for your instrument. And contrary to widespread belief that strength training is something rough, you train your sensitivity and the coordination between the muscles quite well. But now specifically to playing the instrument. 
Of course, what is crucial here is the seating position. So what kind of drum throne you use, how high you sit and how far away from the drum set. A seat with a backrest can be helpful if you have back problems or if you're rehearsing for hours at a time so you can lean back every now and then during breaks. However, it will not improve your balance because as I said, it's a dynamic process. It's more important what kind of shape you use. There are many different options here, which of course behave differently depending on how high you sit. So I can't give you a general answer here, just this tip. A common mistake is testing a drum throne, feeling totally comfortable in the store, but forgetting that you have to test it like you would actually play on it. It works great with air drumming, but not anymore on the drum set. If possible, test different stools extensively over several days and exactly how you would actually play. I personally use the Ahead Spinal Glide drum throne with a split seat. Because it helps pelvic flexibility, it's said to be great for the lower back. There are also office chairs that use this principle. I can't judge that because I didn't clone myself, so I don't have a direct comparison. But I like it because I prefer a stool that is flexible, but relatively firm so that I don't sink into it, but still sit on the seat, not in it. This one is definitely an option for anyone who prefers that as well. It is also available as a saddle and with a backrest. And what I like about it is that it's really stable. And that is the next very important point. Your drum throne must be 100% solid. You have to be able to fix it completely, otherwise it is no good. A wobbly chair can hinder your whole learning process. This also applies to crooked stools or those with a too small, too small a seat for you. A stable throne that suits you is a very good investment. Before we get to the position, please write me in the comments what kind of drum throne you use and why it works for you. Would be very interesting to read about the different views on this. The seat height and the distance to the drum kit are of course very important. By the way, they also strongly influence your attitude during playing. If you need overview and control, you better sit higher. If you need power and want to play heavy, then you better sit lower. Then of course, the center of gravity is also lower overall, which is not unimportant for balance. But if you play a lot with your feet, it is exhausting because your hips are already close to the end position. The same applies if you sit too close. However, if you sit too far away, your legs create a lot of leverage in front of you, so you either lean too far back or have to constantly work your back muscles against it. A rule of thumb is the two angles between hip and thigh, as well as in the knee, should each be a little more than 90 degrees, so the hip is a little higher than the knee and the lower leg is roughly vertical. Of course, there are also various ways in which you can train your balance directly while playing on the set. Naturally, you always practice this as long as you just play and keep your balance, but there are a few exercises that challenge you further so that you can practice it even more effectively. For this, I brought in an expert, namely Florian Fox, who with his Fit for Drums concept deals very intensively with topics such as sitting position, posture, and of course, balance. And now he's going to show you some great exercises and give you even more tips. The issue of balance is a very important one when we are playing the drums. An upright and stable body position is a very important basis. Posture is a dy dynamic process. So when we talk about a good posture, it doesn't mean that we are sitting stuck still and stiff and bolt upright on the drum set, but that a certain amount of movement is completely normal and must be. In an upright stable position, the body is oriented upwards. We sit centrally on the drum chair and our hips are roughly above the spindle of the chair. Now, the body forms an axis of hips, spine, shoulders, neck and head. This axis is then roughly above the spindle of the chair. This position is now the easiest to maintain balance. If we sit in balance and have an upright posture, then it is also the case that our joints are in their natural position and we can relax easily and move in a completely natural way when we are playing. In doing so, we achieve the right muscle tone. This means the right relationship between the necessary basic tension that we need when sitting and at the same time sufficient looseness. If we have too much tension or if we are tense, a loose movement is prevented. Tension is the enemy of us drummers and of movement in general. 
Too little tension creates a lax posture and prevents us from being able to keep our balance evenly. What are the typical mistakes in achieving a good balance while playing? The settings of our drum set and above all the height of the drum chair are often a reason that can throw us off balance. Likewise, set construction can be a cause of awkward posture and balance. We get out of balance, especially when the body's center of gravity is wrong. A drum set that is set too low, and especially a snare that is set too low, and above all the chair that is set too high, will result in a wrong center of gravity. This is pushed forward. In the above descriptive orientation of the body upwards, the body's center of gravity lies centrally above the chair. When the center of gravity is shifted forward, the hip angle between thigh and upper body decreases. This limits hip mobility. In addition, there is no, now too much weight on the feet. The feet have to support or hold the weight of the upper body, which reduces freedom of movement. Here you often fall into the wrong posture of a hunched back, in which you lean down towards the set with your entire upper body. This creates great tension in the back and the loads on the spine are very high, which can ultimately lead to tension, pain or even long-term damage such as herniated discs. A chair that is set too low and a drum set that is set too high cause the center of gravity to shift backwards. In order to be able to reach the drum set to some extent, you lean backwards to compensate. This shifts the body center of gravity backwards. Feet lose contact with the pedals and gain control is impaired. In addition, you often end up with a hollow back, which causes additional tension in the area of the upper body, especially the back. A seating position too far forward or too far back can be another cause that th throws us off balance. If we sit too far back, we cannot longer reach the pedals, probably with our feet, and we have to stretch our legs very far in order to even get our feet onto the pedals. This twists our hip and upper body, causing us to lose balance. This is because we have to stretch, for example, the bass drum foot very far forward, the leg is pushed forward and the upper body follows. The situation is similar when a sitting position that is too close. We pull the foot and thus the leg very close to the body, so we have to push our hip back little to even reach the pedal. This rotation of the upper body forwards or backwards is therefore a compensatory movement due to the wrong distance from the drum chair. The structure of the drum set and the playing style also have an influence on the balance. With a large drum set, you have long distances to reach cymbals or toms, where you can go out of balance faster. You have to make large movements, which means the body has to compensate more to stay balanced during these movements. Movement intensive playing and the style of music can also make it easier to lose balance. Playing calmly, relaxed and evenly makes it easier for the body to stay in balance. Playing with intensive movement or show elements tends to throw the body off balance. The more you use your feet, the more difficult it is to keep your body balanced. The feet are often used as a support function. For example, if you play a groove on the closed hyatt, the hyatt foot is more or less firmly on the pedal and can thus support the body. Foot patterns with bass drum and hyatt on the other hand, tend to create more movement that needs to be balanced and where it can be easier to get off balance. Balance is most difficult to maintain when performing different movements with the limbs, especially the feet. Therefore, different bass drum and hi hat patterns are very good for training the balance. I show you a first example of how you can train balance with a relatively simply bass drum and hi hat combination. We play it in quarter notes now. You see, even in such a simple way, it is not easy to stay in balance. And the more you use your feet, the more difficult is it to keep the balance. So I show you another variant that represents more complex movement.
In these forms of playing, the legs are very much in motion. The stability must come from the upper body. This balances the movements of the legs. The better your upper body is trained, the easier it is to keep your balance and sit in a natural position. Intensive playing with a double bass drum very often results in an imbalance. But how can you train the balance for playing the double bass drum? Especially if you were used to leaning on the bass drum pedal between the beats before. The training is mainly done by playing with the double bass drum itself. So learning by doing. Nevertheless, there are various ways to train the balance for playing in this form. And it is important that you train the whole thing in a practical and targeted way. These were different examples of how to train balance. But how do you find out what is the best position or the best balance for you when you're playing? There is no such thing as the right sitting position, as each person is unique. But you can and you should train your balance accordingly using various forms of exercises. By focusing on it, you can also sit and play on the drum set with a good balance. Many thanks to Florian for these many tips and exercises. If you want to see more from him on this topic, check out his website where you can find more source material like special lessons on balance, including special ones for the double bass drum. So we see how important balance is on the drums, how many factors it depends on, but that it can be practiced in a targeted manner. And you should, because as always in life, if we have not trained something before, then we can achieve the greatest effect if we devote ourselves to this matter. We should see weaknesses as an opportunity to gain the most ground here as quickly as possible so that the overall result improves quickly. So I wish you a lot of fun with these exercises. Write me in the comments what you get from them and be sure to check out Florian's website. One thing by the way we haven't addressed now is the issue of hearing protection. Since the organ of equilibrium is in the ear and our percep perception itself uses acoustic stimuli to orientate itself and maintain balance, headphones, especially in-ears, should actually have a major impact on balance. If anyone knows more about this or has experience, please write that in the comments as well. The link to the full playlist is of course in the description. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and bye bye.